Affordability, new construction, a location perfectly situated by arguably the best small city and large city in the entire state of Florida, and not Pleasantville. These are just a few of the items that make Parish, Florida super interesting in 2024. Welcome, you've arrived at your A to Z comprehensive exhaustive guide to the city of Parish, Florida, the video to replace all videos. We're gonna talk about where it's at, what exactly matters, and everything to possibly know about the real estate including a bonus free giveaway analytical model that includes every single sale that was recorded over the last about 16 months. And we're gonna walk through everything you need to know in every category as it relates to what I just said there. My name is Adam Hancock. You have arrived at the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel, your smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. Don't forget that free download in the description box below before you go and let's get started. Okay, let's kick things off with location and geography. So what is it exactly? And then more importantly, what does Parish Florida mean to the area that surrounds it? Because that's far more crucial for this topic than many cities we talk about. So with a broad brush, I'm gonna give you a speed round version here. We are part of the Sarasota, Florida Greater Metro. It's a two county conversation, Sarasota and Manatee. Sarasota proper, Sarasota County, is central and south basically all the way east to west so to the east we have this very southern tip of lakewood ranch florida the popular master plan area and we go to the west we have half of longboat key and we start working our way down so longboat key is a barrier island st armand circle Lido key bird key downtown sarasota northern sarasota mainland and then just keep going south basically siesta key the barrier island we have mid to southern sarasota palmer ranch gulf gate and then we get below the Sarasota city limits. We have a couple more cities in the conversation and a couple more beaches. Osprey City, Nokomis, Venice, Anglewood to the coast, North Fort to the east, Venice Beach, Casperson, Brohard beaches, Minnesota Key. And then basically we get to our southern bookend of Southwest Florida, which is the northernmost tip of Fort Myers. So it's Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Naples, Marco Island, Everglades, water. To the north, we grab the baton and we do the same thing basically. So we go to Manatee County, and if we stay on the coast, the other half of Longboat Key, Coquina, Bradenton Beach, Holmes, Anna Maria Island fall off into the water by the Skyway Bridge, Coastal Mainland Numbered Street, Mainland Bradenton, Mainland twice. Uh, and then we have the rest of Lakewood Ranch, Florida. We have Parish, Palmetto, and then the southernmost tip of our northern bookend, which is Tampa Bay. Now, with that being said, like I mentioned, what is far more important than a specific location itself in a silo when it comes to Parish is context. All the value, in my opinion, is derived from how Parish evolved, what it was before, what it is now, what it is going to be. And from a historical perspective, I think that is one of the most important things when it comes to this general subject matter. So if you're around Sarasota at all, let's say 20, 25 years ago, whether that was vacation, you're from here, anywhere in between, then you would know going above downtown Sarasota to the east was rather anticlimactic. It was just land, it was country. If anything, you went in that direction of going east of town to get uh, more space. It was, it was intentional on purpose. It wasn't necessarily for a lot of other reasons beyond that. West was always popular. And then even if you think of like the Fort Hammer Bridge as it exists today, which makes it rather simple to cruise north to south up and down that area going northeast of Sarasota, well, it didn't exist in the same fashion. So believe it or not, a while back, it was even more difficult to get from country to more country, which definitely was not helping the overall value proposition. Well, then we have a very crucial moment in history that in 1995, Lakewood Ranch as we know it began, basically. So Summerfield, the, the very first community started, I think they started building at like $99,000. So that would have been a great time to buy. But Summerfield's built, they do Greenbrook, and they're, they're developing that whole section between University and State Road 70, downtown Lakewood Ranch, Country Club West, all of the main parts. It goes absolutely berserk from 1995 to 2005, again from 2005 to 10 to 15, and really no sign of stopping right now. You got 35 plus communities, multiple downtowns, et cetera. But because in my opinion of how Sarasota historically was before, as I kind of hinted at, and then right after that, how fast one of the most developed times in the history of this part of Southwest Florida happened in such a short period of time, it's really interesting to know how people thought of the whole thing. In essence, even with all of this cool development, it was still super fresh in people's minds, if you had any familiarity before with the area, that it was really further than what everyone deemed important. Downtown Sarasota, the coast, the reason everybody was in this, this part of the state, all of this area, the knock on it was that it was far. And a lot of the value in the last 30 years developed around this exact proposition. Now, Lake Ranch, Florida is a great proof case of an area that found a way to get on top of 
these surface level negatives, right? So if everybody's sitting back saying, why would you go all the way out there if you're gonna move to this part of the state, wouldn't it defeat the purpose? Well, the only reason you should do that is if you gain an advantage and they gave you many. One of those things is a big knock on the suburbs historically is that you're far from everything, obviously, right? Well, including you gotta go to, if you want a cool restaurant, you gotta go to downtown Sarasota, you know, the schools aren't in the area, all these kind of things, right? Well, they give you all the modern conveniences and more, probably more than anyone would individually want, right? So they have multiple downtowns and now they progress to farmer's markets and they progress to a lot of the cool um, individual restaurants and coffee shops and stuff from downtown or their second locations are out there, right? So do you really need to go into town? Is it really worth it? The second thing and one of the biggest is new construction housing. You know, an area that is popular, if, everyone's, if everyone like disagreed with the suburbs and tried to shove into the coast, then of course, over time, all these neighborhoods are already mature, right? So one, availability is an issue, but also they don't have room to build these master plan concepts, which give you tons of options, gives you a lot of affordability in, in retrospect, give you amenities, and are a lot smarter, newer, you know, sustainable, all these kind of things. So they eventually found a way to succeed in that realm, became, and so big, it became its own thing. And one thing, in my opinion, that really didn't hurt any of this concept is a lot, if not most of the buyer demand came from people that aren't from here. They're from out of state. A lot of times they're out of country. So you don't have to overcome negatives of the locals if the people moving here are already two hours from the coast right now. With all of that being said, when it comes to Parish, Florida, what it was then, what it is now, albeit a much more mature version than this conversation even a couple of years ago, it's further. So if I just went through an entire monologue so far to explain why people maybe think it's a negative to move to this particular part of the state, then this, in essence, on the surface, is a lesser version of that. It's a junior liquid rich. Now, I don't at all here, and this is the key, say this to be negative. In my opinion, this is about leaning into something to gain an advantage because you now have a deeper understanding of what the majority of the minds of the people deem important. So now let's talk about how to think about all of this, and then I wanna show you specific real estate numbers. If I'm you watching and I just heard this whole blurb about how Lakewood Ranch is really, really far from town, but they're so cool that they got on top of the concept and now people are good with it. And then you say Parrish is a worse version of all that. Why the heck would I get into that area? But well, the caveat here is that in my personal opinion, there are three distinct advantages that Parrish Florida can provide that the others cannot. Okay, and the first of those being affordability. Now, granted, not near as cheap as it used to be. This has to be the primary driver of why most people in my experience have even heard the word Parrish Florida. Because they, set out for this to achieve this ideal they're trying to satiate getting you know moving to this paradise kind of town and solve a specific housing criteria and say for example sake lakewood ranch florida wins the best mousetrap award in this search it's very mature has a ton of different options it has variety different price points all this kind of th thing then you compare against welland park you're like what else is out there maybe that doesn't work maybe it's too far south it's just not in a specific timing with development that works for your criteria and then the rest is that middle of Sarasota, like under Lakewood, above Venice, but parallel to like si Siesta Key and below downtown. You have Artistry, Grand Park, you have Sky Ranch, Worthington a couple of years ago that closed out. Um, and that's just new construction that's pocketed within mature uh, areas. So just you just like Lakewood Ranch the best, right? And then you're in that search and you start in Waterside, you find yourself kind of creeping up. It's just not quite working. Like, you know, the pricing with the housing you're trying to achieve and the timing and the wait lists and you find yourself moving up and at a certain point you get to the upper quadrant above state road 70 and you're saying you know listen if i drive like seven eight miles i saw this other neighborhood you know i could get a pool where i wouldn't have been able to get one i could get two more bedrooms 800 more square feet i could get the extended patio the nicer model that i wouldn't have to sacrifice necessarily and a lot of times that's how parishing becomes a subject because you find yourself just cruising on the fort hammer bridge and just by driving a little further, you end up in a different town that has a lot of interesting things. One of those interesting things is that the sister community idea, right? Like a lot of uh, Lake Ranch surrounds, one of the best ways to learn is using specific neighborhoods and builders at the same time, 20 birds, one stone. Neighborhoods, builders to solve what kind of homes you could get all around Southwest Florida, how far the driving distances are within Lake Ranch to other parts of Lake Ranch, timing, development phases, all that kind of thing. Well, they have mirror versions of all of that a lot of the times in Paris, because that's what these builders do. So not only economically is incredibly interesting, because again, just learning the town, right? Seeing how one builder prices their own neighborhood against themselves in a different city tells you what they think of the cost and they know a lot of information. They've done this a lot of times. So that's a good learning experience right there. 
But also you could just basically pick up uh, an idea in Lake Ranch and drop it in Parrish and save hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, when Windward, just a couple examples, when Windward was building down in Waterside with Neil communities, we were doing a lot with Canoe Creek as a sister, even though they have Indigo and Lake Ranch too. Canoe Creek and, and Windward were good juxtapositions. Um, and it was so much cheaper, you know? So people are just like, if they were romantic about what Windward was, then, uh, you know, there was a lower like, HOA under $200 a month. I think there's no CDD. It was very coastally aesthetic. It was very, very beautiful community. You know, Del Webb Lake Ranch is another good example. Uh, Del Webb Bayview, we were doing the same exact thing with. It's in Lower Parish, and Del Webb Lake Ranch was a little bit more mature, but it was, you know, not $50,000 cheaper, way, way cheaper, right? Then you have um, the Esplanade brand by Taylor Morrison, a lot of people like. It's not the exact same thing, but Southern Palmetto, Northern Parish has an Esplanade brand there, and they do that kind of like Esplanade, Esplanade, and like what Park East is. They have that two different Taylor Morrison concept of like different styles and affordability. Twin Rivers, North River Ranch, you know, you could go on. So that's another point. And then I'll, one more, and I'll hit pricing here real quick to kind of tell you the actual numbers. But the other thing I think is really compelling, if not one of the most sneaky, compelling things in this whole subject matter, is that I have toured I, so, uh, so many people <laughs> on this concept, right? Doing YouTube, talking to people about what they're trying to target, then experimenting with what they experience when they get here and refining that process of getting better at guessing the result to save you time, save you money, efficient, whatever. Now we have obviously a lot bigger organization and I'm kind of doing this at scale with a bunch of agents that I speak to and it's just, I don't physically go, but we deal with way more people. So I have a lot of examples is what I'm saying. And almost 90 plus percent of the time, people start with one thing and they end up in a different area, but they've never reframed. Like, so for instance, right? Uh, you start in Lake Ranch, you're looking at the whole thing holistically, you're excited, uh, you're touring, you're trying to make a big area seem small, you're looking at specific builders and all these communities that you have, I'm sure you have a short list of communities, right? Well, a lot of times what people do is like they realize at a certain point, Waterside doesn't work. It's either too expensive or the Sarasota school zones don't work for your middle schooler and you don't want to go to ODA or something like that. It's just not there yet. And then uh, right above Waterside, so all the way south, right? Right above Waterside, you have the mature neighborhoods and also expensive. You have the Isles, and you have some custom neighborhoods. You have the Lake Club. You have Country Club West and Each, which is the mature golf neighborhood. You're working your way up. Summerfield was the first community ever built. It has uh, no gate. It's all resale. Uh, you know, it's just different. Greenbrook, similar. You're working your way up, right? You have all the stuff by the high school, and you get into upper quadrants is what I'm getting at. And the thing is, is that if you look at the city center of Lakewood Ranch versus Parish city center, yes, Lakewood Ranch itself, especially the lower districts of Lakewood Ranch, could be 15 to 20 minutes at least closer to downtown Sarasota than beaches than Parrish. However, if you're comparing Parrish to Lakewood Ranch, most of that comparison is not all of Lakewood Ranch. It's the upper and most likely the northeastern quadrant up here where Sapphire Point is, Sweetwater, Esplanade Azaria, which is an anomaly, Park East, Savannah, even in the northern above the high school, Central Park, you, the, the both upper quadrants east to west. That's a more apt apples to apples comparison with Parrish. It's not all of it right? Parrish is more competitive against Upper Lakewood Ranch. If you compare Upper Lakewood Ranch to Parrish, very different geography, right? So it's all not equal. Lakewood Ranch is 33,000 acres. So upper, if you Google Esplanade Azario to downtown Sarasota, map it, and then Parrish City Center to down, so not even the closest parish, Parrish City Center to downtown Sarasota, five minutes, four to five minute total difference to downtown and the beaches. So if you look at it like that, and you would have stepped back and said, okay, going in fresh, actually 22% of Lake Ranch was actually in play for me, not all of it. So once I learn more, I can simplify it. And you look at that and you step back and you, then you step back in and you say, okay, what's my criteria can actually do? It might actually be more competitive to look at Northern Lake Ranch, Northeast Lake Ranch versus a certain part of Parish versus a certain part of North Venice versus a certain part of Welland. But you wouldn't have known enough to do that. It would have been too overwhelming at the beginning. So I'll digress that point. But I would re-look at that about being like, yeah, on the table, Lake Ranch versus Paris. A lot of people are like, why the heck is this even a conversation? If you get more minute, it's way more compelling. So anyway, I, I'll let that go. Just to bring this home, um, like I said, it's not as big as a divide as it used to be, but it's still significant. So Lake Ranch over the last 12 months, I pulled it today when I'm filming this, which will be like only four days removed from when the video posts. Average price in Lake Ranch over the last 360 days, $746,000, which is 309 a square foot. Median was $587,000 because you have some luxury neighborhoods in Lakewood, so there's an outlier thing. Median is probably more accurate, $587,000 with a 284 a square foot. Parish, 
$505,000 average um, versus the 746, that's almost 25% differential um, as a discount, uh, exactly, which is 227 a square foot, 442K median, because you don't have a lot of outlier luxury stuff in uh, Paris other than like these large country properties, $442,000 median, which is 217 a square foot. So 217 a square foot versus 284. Uh, which is about 23% discount. So it's almost even play there. So still worth the squeeze in my opinion. And it, it becomes more um, compelling when you're like trying to achieve a specific thing. And you're like, in Lakewood, I might not like this neighborhood because I'd have to do a 52 foot front plane lot. Like we really want that three, two and a half, that Palazzo kind of floor plan. Well, one, one of the best ways if you don't need the Lakewood stuff necessarily is to hop to achieve something like that. Maybe you can have an equity investment situation later too. Um, that's what I say about affordability. Okay, major advantage number two, I'm calling closer to nothing and everything at the same time. And I don't wanna be mysterious here, but if you've watched my content for any period of time, you could probably glean that I'm big on hedging my bets. I would rather stack a bunch of advantages in my mind to mitigate risk versus the alternative of chasing a one-off exciting windfall opportunity in a silo. Just my background and how I function. And I think when it comes to location with where Paris sits, where a lot of people would deem this as a negative all the way around if it's apples for apples, like, yeah, go out in the boonies, but you get this, which it has a big layer of that. Um, I think it actually sneaks into an interesting proposition because if you take what I beat to death in this video so far, the advantages in the minds of the people when it comes to the geography of Sarasota's Metro, it's this Western corridor, this triangle of downtown, Lido Beach, Siesta Key, right? If that's your value, Lakewood Ranch clearly wins out albeit not as compelling as you go north, like I mentioned, but it, you can't beat it. If it was apples for apples, why would you choose Parrish? Parrish isn't closer to the beaches. It's not closer to Venice. It's not closer to anything as far as when it comes to that conversation. However, if you can't be closer to one main advantage, you can't be technically closer to any of the main advantages versus a slightly better mousetrap, then why not try to be three or four things that combined are amazing or individually would, would be anticlimactic. And what Parrish does is it doesn't go just straight northeast. If you look at it, it hooks. So what it hooks you into is it's not only just 40 minutes one way to downtown Sarasota, like I mentioned, which the reason I always reference that is it's three and a half miles to Leo Beach and it's six miles to Siesta Key. So if you get to downtown, you're in it, right? Well, it's also 34 minutes one way to downtown St. Pete because it goes like this. So it gets you to that bridge access, which is very, very key. It's not just being by the water, it's functional water. And downtown St. Pete's lovely. It's like a whole different world. And then you're also 40 minutes to downtown Tampa. So you get, and to, in my mind, Sarasota is the best smaller metro in the state of Florida. Tampa, hands down, is the best bigger, biggest one, especially in the last few years. If you had to pick, I'd go Tampa over Miami, Jacksonville, Orlando all day long. So if you could be closer to Tampa versus Naples, I would choose Tampa all day because Naples is like Sarasota uh, version two, right? It's a different version of Sarasota. So if you have the best, you can chill in a peaceful environment and perish in a country town that's on the fringes of the retirement town. But at any point within 35 to 40 minutes, you have all the concert venues, all the theaters, all the major sporting events, you get both. That's a hard thing to beat, right? So you could be in Lower Lakewood Ranch, that's fine, but you're also 25 minutes one way further from all the stuff, including the airport and all the real Tampa amenities that aren't in St. Pete are all in the same area. You know, like South Tampa's exit 39, downtown's exit 44, and in between you have Raymond James Stadium with the Bucks. You have a lot of the spring training baseball that's not in the Pinellas County side. You have the Tampa Bay Lightning that's in Channel side. It's all shoved in the same area, right? So you're 25 minutes further from all of it, so it's an hour versus 40. If you're in Venice, you're closer to the beaches, maybe you're closer to Naples, but you're also an hour and a half now from both the Fort Myers airport and the Tampa airport. So you get what I'm hitting at, right? And then if you wanted the parish version of Tampa Bay, like you wanted to be north looking south, not south looking north, then I would choose parish for the most part, um, residing in Sarasota going to Tampa versus vice versa, because the vice versa option is just a lot less mature. You, you're talking Ruskin, Wamama, Southern Apollo Beach in my mind. And it just doesn't look like Parish. Parish looks a lot more like Lakewood Ranch than those areas do. Or you'd have to go all the way to West Chapel, which takes that, which is a worse version of everything I explained as far as like being close to one thing. So anyway, I think it's a, it might just be, I might be the only one that thinks that. But again, just another way to look at things to maybe lean into what other people deem a clear, clear negative that you could sit back and maybe win out long-term in that conversation. Okay, and the third and final advantage I wanna discuss, it's a simple one, and I'm just gonna call it uh, not Pleasantville. 
I think one of the most overlooked thing and self admittedly I overlook this constantly is that everyone that ends up in parish is because it was plan B or C because they couldn't figure out plan A. And I think that's a bit of a, a bit of an oversight because to a, if you come into, if you're like, I want to do Sarasota for sure. Right. And even if you want a new construction house, for instance, right? Like say that's the base. Well, if, if it's Parrish versus Lakewood Ranch versus Welland Park versus the middle of Sarasota versus even North Venice where it's evolving or Palmer Ranch, what it used to be, then um, those look a lot more similar to each other than maybe Parrish does, right? And um, they're very master planned. It's very communal amenities and all the things that a lot of people view as a big, big benefit. If you do not, this is beyond just, I don't like CDDs, I don't like HOAs, that kind of thing, right? Because master plan is master plan, even if it's one neighborhood. But not everybody wants that. Like, what if you want a little bit more space? What if you don't want to be your neighborhood to be on top of 50 other neighborhoods? What if you, you want a better chance that it won't fully become Lake Ranch? You're not just someone waiting to get an equity advantage because it will be developed. And a lot of it will be like that. But if you're someone that is seeking something that just does not look like Lake Ranch and fits in a box like that, but you still want a new construction house, then Parrish could actually be a choice. And this could be one of your biggest advantages overall is if you truly believe and feel like what I'm describing, then most people aren't. Most people are like hindered by people being like, why would you go in Parrish or something like that? So you could have huge advantages because you could be, you know, sitting back and having the last lap potentially in that conversation. And Parrish, in my mind, will never fully be a Lakewood Ranch, just like Wesley Chapel won't, because of land ownership. You know, that's the majority of the reason Lakewood Ranch is able to do what it was, what it did is because of who owned it and how small that was. Parrish is being pieced together by people acquiring land. And a lot of people are not going to sell their land or they're going to fight to not sell it. And it's just not going to evolve in a way where it's all every builder colluded and planned to do one big thing. So because of that, even at maturity, there'll be pockets of really master plan stuff. But there'll also be pockets of stuff where you can not have to have all of that, right? It's like combining central Sarasota with like parts of Welland Park, basically. So anyway, I'll leave that one alone. That's a pretty simple one, but not pleasant. That would be my third one. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more away from people, but not completely desolate. And let's talk a little bit about real estate. Okay, we have made it to the final section of the video, and now let's talk homes. And since I went so painstakingly hard after trying to contextualize Paris, Florida itself, and I do think that this conversation we're about to have makes a lot less sense until you've had that other conversation, it does make the real estate thing a little easier. So I just want to do two major things, and then we'll wrap up. The first of those being, uh, let's talk neighborhoods. So I have a lot of data. It is ranked, it's cleaned up, and I want to talk about where people actually spent their money uh, what it costs where, what sizes you can get, the price points. And there's a free giveaway during this section, which I mentioned at the beginning. So I'm actually going to use that tool that I'm giving away to demonstrate it. So I can show you how to use the tool, what to do with it after. And then we'll also talk neighborhoods while we're doing it. And then I also thought before we wrap up, it would be most helpful to pull out new construction separately. It's just a different animal. So I'm going to talk about some of my favorite neighborhoods, what they're doing now, stuff coming soon, and just overall a good preview of the new construction world within Parish and how to look at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me hop to my screen share here and we'll get started. Okay, we are live with my model here, or kind of live. And you guys actually get the benefit of timing because I was building basically before this like a 360 day 2023 exclusive parish model. And now I got back around to it. We're sitting in April, obviously, of 2024. So instead of just looking 12 months back from April and starting from scratch, I just added it to what I already had. So now we have almost a full... 15 plus a couple weeks of data, which could be more important for year over year outlooks and however you want to use it. One of the big benefits, another big benefit of Parish is simplicity. So if we were talking Parish uh, or rather Venice or Lake Ranch or something like that, we have multiple zip codes we're talking. So now I can't just get to neighborhoods because I got to separate north within the city versus south versus the coast because all is not equal. Well, Parish, the chance you pick a home or a neighborhood and it's more similar to the ones around it uh, is, is a better shot. So maybe you could actually pick what you like more and it just simplifies the whole process. So we're just going to get right into it. 2,341, uh, recorded sales in MLS, uh, over the last, uh, that time period, right? April to January, 2023, 492k average home, and you can get to median with the raw data. Uh, I have this tab, two tabs pre-built for you in case you don't want to get real into like the nitty gritty, but if you're Excel savvy, you can get to all my raw data really easily. It's built like that and you can use it however you want. Um, the first eight neighborhoods made up about 56% of the total records and then it gets loosey goosey. So it just lets you basically kind of, if you're researching, say like one, what did everybody do? So there's probably some correlating factors to that. You can learn from that experience. Um, but it lets you say like, what's not an anomaly? What's a, what's a 
if 14 months straight, 15 months straight, you had a, a similar price in square footage, then there's probably a better shot that you can get to that again. So that's the way to look at it. We have number of sales, we have sold price average, price per square foot. We have the square footage size of the home itself, bedroom, bathroom, year bill, annual taxes. Annual taxes, I would take with a grain of salt. Obviously people aren't paying $2 a year, that would be amazing. But uh, you have age of home, it hasn't hit from new constructions period, recording errors, there's a lot of stuff that can affect that. But basically beyond that, you know, you got Prosperity Lakes 55 and up, North River Ranch is new construction heavy, Del Webb is the Pulte owned 55 and up brand that's in Bayview. Bayview is, an, is a like new construction concepts by Culture Land, I believe. So the Isles at Bayview is a different neighborhood within it. Uh, Twin Rivers, you kind of get the point, but you can kind of, I'm going to let you guys run with all of that, um, but I want to show you how to use it. So what you can do basically is with this, everything in green means everything selected. And there's not going to, this isn't going to be condo heavy because we're not on the coast here, but what you could do is you could say, okay, I want a single family, right? Well, single family is not much move there. You barely even sold unless you were looking for it. So it looks like only about 200 of the total sales last year were non-single family. But a good example is if you're saying, I, I want a townhome or a villa only, you could select that and you can see 56 of the records, but you see the exact neighborhoods and you can get into that. And that's a real clean picture. And if you want two things at once, I use a Mac, so I hold command. But if you hold it, if they're both selected, you're in, right? So now this is villa and single family. So that's the way to function it. Um, and I believe it's control on PC. And this X right here resets. So that's the way to use the model. So let's say we want to go single family. Um, let's say we don't want to spend more than 750K. So I want to select everything under. So I select one. This one's also under 750. And then this one's also under 750. So you can see that the record's lower there. A lot of them are under 750 in Paris, which is nice. But let's say we want to go oh, as a better example. Let's get rid of this one. So under 500K. So under 500K, we had... Um, over 50% of our records. But again, look, look at the, some, like a lot of the neighborhoods are still there, but um, it lets you get way more minute of like what was affecting the neighborhood ranking. You could also say square footage and you could say, I, I need over 2,500. So it gets way more narrow there. 178 records and exact neighbors. So Bella Laga is still, you know, winning the game here. And then you can even say with my new uh, data, you could say that this is the month sold. So you could say, okay, I want only this year. So I'm holding command. And, you know, 37 sales of our 2000 plus. So not a lot happening in Q1 of this year with this exact criteria, but you could say like, okay, I'll be more generous on my square footage. And you kind of get the point, right? So that's how to use the model. Now, another big thing to know, I'll clear out some of this. At any point you could say like, okay, uh, I want to know more about it. So you could, even if you picked one narrow here, um, let's find like a, no real luxury one or let's find a more anomaly. Okay, so this is 860, right? So let's see if we find a couple records. All right, so 661, right? McClinley Oaks, never heard of it, right? So you double click any digit on the thing. It opens a separate tab that won't affect anything. And it gives you all the exact address and the line item data of like what the actual homes were. You could take these and Google them in Zillow and you can look at the exact home, what it looked like, like, you know, what, what swayed the average age, you know, you could do all of that kind of thing. Um, and if you're local, you can kind of get a lot of familiarity around the model. So let me hit one more thing and then we'll move on to new construction. The other thing I preset for you, and it's just a ranking thing, is rather than just neighborhood first, I have a price ranking. So you can see 350 to 500 by neighborhood. Um, so you want to, you could click this too, but this is already pre-done for you. It's just a different way to look at it, 550 to 750. And I ranked it by the most selling um, in descending order. So the most of the sales existed under five, like we just saw and that kind of thing. But you can do a lot of stuff right with this, right? Like if you click, if you have all the records selected and you double click 2300, that's the raw data. That is the data that underlines these, these little models I built. So you can see if it was how much cash versus conventional, days on market of the sales, you know, all the neighborhoods right here, the standardized version of my neighborhood name here, you can see all of it. So um, that's all I'll say about the neighborhood thing. So please download this, it's in the description box below. If you missed that or you can't get to it because it's kind of hidden now, the sunshinestateco.com, my website, it is on the resources tab in addition to my other models. So there's a Sarasota Manatee, into like a total one. There's a Venice one that's specific to Venice as well. Now you have a parish one. All the timing differs a little bit, but I'll keep adding to that and then I'll keep updating these. Um, so if you go back later, hopefully they're more updated, but let's talk new construction real quick and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay, lastly, let's hit new construction. I want to riff on some ideas that I think are interesting at the moment that I'm favoring. And then I'll pull up some individual neighborhoods and add as much value as I can before we finish up. 
couple things. Multi-generational aspect. What Parrish is benefiting from when it comes to new development, especially, is they just did Lakewood. They did Palmer Ranch before that, and they're in the midst of Welland Park. And it's the same foundational builders that do all of these areas. So they kind of know from all of that data they have how people think of Parrish. They know where the advantages may lie, where the hurdles they have to overcome may exist. And they're trying to develop around that idea. So what that is creating is a very multi-generational aspect of really something for everyone, but some, more something for the everyday person. Uh, more than a lot of areas that say something for everyone where, where yeah, something for everyone if your price point's here. Paris is a lot more feasible across the board in almost every aspect in that conversation. Also, if you want to be somewhere to watch a city actually build, whether that's from an equity advantage or just in general, somewhere that feels big now that will eventually feel much more insular, much more small, or much smaller than uh, interesting option. And that rolls into the point of you add the new construction, the affordability, the rapid development that it's hard for people to look at. It's vague right now. And then Crystal Water Lagoons on top of it, which makes the everything but the beach concept more compelling because now they're basically building in physical bodies of water <laughs> that uh, could take the place of the everyday beach concept. Then um, it's not just interesting for families. It's also interesting for investors, kind of like how a lot of folks targeted the southeast Tampa Bay area with like Apollo Beach or Riverview in that area because they were looking at these opportunities to lean into that were like just on the fringes of whatever he wanted and a little bit less restricted as far as rental restrictions and master plan environments. Could be interesting there. And then also before we hop into neighborhoods here, well, what I think here, what we think collectively is that a lot of what's gonna happen with Parrish is gonna be what happens with Wesley Chapel. It's not just out of state moves. A lot of the Sarasota locals, service-based industries, uh, people that grew up here, a lot of that kind of stuff. You, ha you have your first baby, you want to buy your first townhome, your first investment property, you want to, you need to move to a 3,500 square foot house, or you're just looking at an alternative of like retiring that's not on the coast. We think a lot of it's going to be people that already exist in Southwest Florida that move up and over, not, not as much just straight migration as you'll see a lot in the Lakewood Ranch in Venice. And that's the same thing with happens with people in Tampa that lived in St. Pete for a period of time. I did this downtown Tampa for a period of time, but eventually migrated out to Tampa Palms and Wesley Chapel because of housing needs. So we think we're going to see that too. So just want to talk about a couple of things and then you're probably tired of me talking. So we'll finish up. So say you're someone that is looking for that example I just mentioned, right? You need, you need space, three, four kids. You want 33,000 plus square feet and hyper affordability. We're talking under, and for Sarasota, this is an exaggeration, under 500, under 450, the scenario I just mentioned would be ridiculous to most people. Well, Ryan Homes, which is a really affordable builder at Summerwoods, which I believe MI is also in Summerwoods, for the size and the price, it be something to really look at because it's aggressively affordable compared to what else you could get. So if you're someone that maybe would have bought a Lennar or DR Horton, something maybe to take a peek at. Salt Meadows by Meritage isn't going to be as aggressive in pricing as that. Salt Meadow by Meritage, Meritage Homes. Um, very nice amenities. That could be another one to put in the conversation of trying to lean into that, where it sits in an area where people are trying to get their head around it. If you are looking for more luxurious amenities or fixtures or features of a home and you want the, you, you still like the Paris stuff and you want a more affordable, luxurious version, two neighbors I would look at, Crosswind Point and Crosswind Ranch, uh, homes by West Bay play, plays a lot in that conversation would be something to look at. Inland retirement, I've been thinking about this conversation a ton. Like what, what uh, San Antonio and uh, Lutz and Odessa and Wesley Chapel are to Tampa Bay. It's just the idea of if you didn't say that the, you needed to be next to the coast with reckless abandon, or you're someone that would physically choose, like that's not a monthly thing you're doing, then you could get a ton of advantages when it comes in and out of the 55 plus and Parrish is really going to be in that conversation in a meaningful way. So a couple options you have now and are going to have later. So Del Webb at Bayview, which is that Pulte brand. A lot of people follow Del Webb around like they follow luxury condominium brands. Like similar amenities to all their communities. It, like it's uh, what I find with 55 and up, people are just really looking for a guarantee of like-minded people. If you move to an area like Parrish, where you're not going to accidentally bump into a bunch of people that think like you, same age, or like in your crowd, right? A 55 and up community could give you people that the home price, the criteria, and the migration uh, guarantees a more semblance of finding your community. And I, that's where I see people 
wanting more than just getting rid of kids or something like that. So Del Webb Bayview is also within the master plan Bayview that is owned by Coulter Land. And so you're gonna have multiple communities, you're gonna have communal amenities, you got all that. But another community that I think you're gonna have in the next couple of years is going to be a Coulter owned 55 and up brand that will be alongside the Isles at Bayview and Del Webb's 55 and up at Bayview. And which gives you a nice juxtaposition. If you look at what Lakewood Ranch is, Crestwind versus the Del Webb brand, it's the same comparison, right? So the thing with why you might choose a Coulter over a Del Webb or vice versa, Coulter's um, one of the more luxurious builders uh, if you didn't do custom to me personally. So that's they do things that other builders wouldn't do as far as like a semi-custom outfit, but they also a little bit more luxurious as far as just natural base fixtures and features. And if you know anything about culture in general, uh, beyond like artistry in Sarasota, they, uh, you know, I, I'm familiar with them from Coulter Urban. They build a lot of luxury condominiums. So all of that kind of fervor and flavor pushes into their smaller outfit of single family homes and that kind of thing. So I think that could be an interesting option. So Della Bayview and Coulter's 55 and up that could launch also in their community that they develop. Prosperity Lakes for, um, which was on my list in the neighborhood guide I just mentioned, which is Lennar uh, 55 and up, which is, you know, um, really, really affordable. And then, Del Webb's going to have another one called Sunchase, we're hearing, in the next, let's say, 24 to 36 months. Um, so that, I keep an eye on that. And if you're in, interested in inland retirement, and then before I run out of words here, uh, the last thing is if you're looking for something that's truly master planned out beyond the Bayview area, North River Ranch is probably going to be the most similar to like what a Welland Park would be. Um, it's, uh, Neil communities and Neil land and development is, is heading it up, but you're going to have commercial, you're going to have downtowns, you're going to have shopping. You're going to have, if you look at the Playmore district of Welland park, um, I think you're going to be way more in this alley. Now it's not going to be $250,000 for everything. You're probably at a five to 700 plus depending on what you do. But if you're looking for something that has its own schools built in and something where the negatives of parish would not matter near as much because you have a city within a city. I checked that out just to mention a few. All right, my friend, that is a wrap for today's video. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, please consider doing so. I put out about two videos a week on average, a ton of value packed stuff planned for 2024 across all of Southwest Florida. And that's just the best way to see what's coming next. If you resonated with this kind of content and this depth of information and that kind of thing, and you wanna to speak to anyone, you wanna know anything more, you are in the market or just curious about the market across the entire state of Florida, not just Southwest. I own a real estate brokerage, if you can't tell here, called the Sunshine State Company, a full-scale residential brokerage. And that's the most natural extension to what I'm, the vibe I'm putting off here. We have an amazing team and we're very connected to the economics information first, deep research but we can basically do the rest of the process uh, for you as well. So please consider that. We have a lot of ways to do that. You can text, call, schedule a call at your own timing. You can email, you can join our community group or however you want to communicate with us. Um, and beyond that, the sunshinestateco.com or the sunshinestatecompany.com, we have uh, free tools and resources. The one that was in this video today is in the description box below, but it's also on the website. But we have several relocation guides across uh, Sarasota, Tampa, Naples. We have a Sarasota analytical tool, um, a Venice analytical tool, a parish, and there'll be, as the year goes on, that'll only be deeper. Uh, if you want to read, we have, um, some read versions of the videos that are put in blog format. So just a lot of different ways to get engaged there. So please check that out. Um, and I think that maybe wraps it up. Uh, most importantly, really appreciate you guys taking any time to either listen and or watch today's video. If I can help you in any way, please do not hesitate reaching out and we'll see you on the next one.